everyone, and welcome to another thrilling, enthralling, and captivating edition of the OTRS Central Q&A. Are you excited? Are you excited? Yeah, whatever. All right. So anyways, again, with me being back, feels like, hey, I like getting your guys' questions. It's easy content. I enjoy answering them. Some of you seem to legitimately enjoy this, so plans continue to do these at least once a week. So if you have questions you would like me to answer in a future Q&A, uh, you can tweet them at OTR Central is the Twitter handle and make them good if you would, please. The better the tweet or the question, the more likely it is to get answered. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started, though. Michael Gavin LE1 asks, do you think the Ruthless Aggression Era was a mixed bag or just bad? Um, certainly a mixed bag. And to be completely fair... The Attitude Era was a mixed bag, too. It's just that it's great, was really, really great, but there was real dumb, stupid, idiotic, moronic stuff that they did. It just was outweighed and out overcompensated for by the good, the really, really good, and the great. Uh, at Keys 10 asks, What pissed you off more, the Nexus Burial or the Summer of Punk? Ooh! Ooh! Because on the one hand, the Nexus burial in 2010 buried a whole fleet of fresh faces. The summer of punk in 2011 was a chance to do something different and interesting and try to actually make a big star out of somebody. And of course, we know what they did and they screwed up both of them because that's what WWE does. What one pissed me off more? Um... I still think it's a Nexus burial. Because the Summer of Punk didn't surprise me. Like, there are actually people, I think, still to this day, that assert that they believe CM Punk wasn't under contract when he won that title. Like, what's wrong with you? I mean, you think this is TNA, where they would actually have AJ win the title and not have him locked up to a long-term contract? Uh, that was a shoot. This was a work. Understand the difference, please. Uh... Because it came first, and because of the number of people that it negatively impacted, and how I still feel like the company is feeling the impacts of it to this day, um, I think the Nexus burial pisses me off more. But the, the, well, how the summer of punk all went down, you know, still irritates the hell out of me to this day, too. Uh, at Jackhammer City, Natch asked, thoughts on what Medusa said about the dancers on Raw? I'm sure she said something about objectifying women and da 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 Which, number one... If we're saying that, like, the, 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 what, what's the standard here? Because there are women in the ring that, were wear, that wear less than what those dancers were doing. That's number one. Number two, and, let, and let's keep it 100, or as the kids say, 100. How many women we see that objectify themselves by marrying men just to get at their money because of the power and appeal that that has to them, and then eventually divorce them. You know, they didn't contribute crap, and they had nothing to do with the man's success. They want half. Think about all of these Instagram influencers and social media sluts that sit there and can't wait to get banged by the next NBA or NFL player in the hopes of getting their long-term nest egg settled. Like, give me a damn break. I thought the dancers were stupid, but less because of the, the objectifying of the women, but just more of the fact that it was just stupid. If you're trying to target an 18 to 49 male demographic and doing something like that, then you really need to go all the way with it. That in and of itself is not stupid. What they did, of course, was stupid. The whole thing about objectifying, I'm sure there was something to that effect. I, I don't even know. I could be totally wrong. She could went in the opposite direction, but I'm assuming based off of your question that she did because uh, admittedly, I don't know fully what was said. Michael Farmer, do you think all of WWE's programming will be on the network in the next five to ten years? Um, I think it'll be on a network. When I say that, I don't mean a TV network. I think potentially a streaming service, such as Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. I certainly think that's a possibility, and that might be where they need to go in the future. I would not be surprised if that's where they went in the future. Um, would they put it on their own network? I, I just can't see that. 
Like they would have to get such an increase in their subscriber base that it would not come in order to even potentially financially justify that as a publicly traded company. I just can't see it happening. That would have to be a doomsday, absolute worst case scenario. And I don't think we're at that point. We're going to get to that point in the next five to 10 years. MC Psycho 417, what's the worst mistake WCW ever made during their battle with WWF? Uh, there's a lot of things you can point to, a lot of great things that they did during that time, and a lot of really bad, stupid, dumb things and really horrible, atrocious decisions that cost them. But I think the number one most important thing that they did that killed them at the end of the day was that they didn't focus enough on their own house and their own business, and they were too obsessed, specifically Bischoff, with WCW beating WWF. They were obsessed with beating WWF. They were obsessed with what Vince did. The going and starting the show earlier, going live, going three hours, giving away spoilers, like all of that stuff. Like when you start doing that, it goes beyond just fun pettiness to uh, you need to worry about your own house. So you got to keep your own house in order. Like there are so many other things you could point to that were bad mistakes and in retrospect looking back. But to me, over 20 years later, that still is the single biggest thing that led to their downfall of when it really started to go downhill in 99, especially into 2000, was um, that they were too caught up in just trying to be WWF. They weren't building for the future. They... It just was about them not focusing on themselves enough. At Piznik64, how do you get back into wrestling after not watching it for years? Uh, honestly, Stephen, I don't know if you do. You'd have to significantly lower your standards in order to enjoy it if you haven't really seriously watched in a couple of years. So I promise you, it's not that good. And especially if you're talking about WWE, it's really not that good. Uh, Wrestling Rants ask if Nexus won at SummerSlam 2010, how many of them could have been main eventers? Um, the ironic thing is, is even with Nexus losing in that spot, you still had a position where you could have had Wade Barrett, Skiff Sheffield, later Ryback, and Daniel Bryan all be main event players. So that in and of itself didn't ultimately cost them from having at least three main eventers coming out of that group. And that feels like that's the ceiling of what it should have been. Of course, we got one of them, and it was the guy you would have at least expected going back into 2010 times in Daniel Bryan. Um, they could have had three, but I don't know if that necessarily is just related to uh, them having to win at SummerSlam 2010. I think it killed their momentum as a group and impacted several of those guys potentially negatively, but um, I don't think it changed anything. There should have been three main eventers out of that, and we got one. Uh, the Chosen One. Is Randy Orton a good choice to break Ric Flair's 16 world titles? Well, you know, hashtag breakfast club rules, bitches. Um, that's breakfast club business right there. Like, imagine this. Hear me out. John Cena, 16-time world champion. Randy Orton, 16-time world champion. Fuck. Just imagine this. Just imagine this. <laughs> a politics on a poll match for the WWE Universal Intergalactic Superstar. My dong's bigger than your dong. My Jort Johnson measures up better against your ring boner freaking world championship. Like imagine those two guys, both with 16 world championships. Main event, WrestleMania. Winner gets to break Flair's record. Winner gets to 17. My God, that would be peak epitome. Breakfast Club business. And we never had seen Ed Orton one-on-one -on -one under WrestleMania. All the times they fought, the company never thought to themselves, gee, we're trying to sell this as some big Rock Austin uh, re-reversion rivalry. We might want to have them go one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. They never did. Because they're stupid. So give it to us now. Have Orton win a couple of joke title reigns. You know, build it for two or three years. Like, something that big and that epic, you can't just rush into. Uh, Mid Carter J, the Hardy Boys or the Dudley Boys? Great question. Uh, probably the Dudleys, because they were better on the mic. Although, in terms of, like, actually watching from an entertainment standpoint, in terms of wrestling, I would prefer the Hardy Boys. Dark and Soul 27. What is your favorite edge match? 
Everyone hatred him against Christian because that annoys Mr. Rout to this day. How about that? <laughs> At Finsuke asked, what are your thoughts on Chris Jericho on Twitter? And do you think he's becoming a suck attached suck up for Tony Khan at AEW? You know, he may very well be, but they're also paying him pretty handsomely, I'm sure. So I don't fundamentally have a huge issue with that. Uh, as far as Chris Jericho on Twitter, I don't know. I've been blocked for a few years now, so I don't know what the hell he's really saying for the most part. So uh, you're asking the wrong person there. Uh, Jeremiah Phillips asks, who is more overrated, Seth Rollins or Cody Rhodes? My God, you could do an entire video about this. An entire video about this. Woo! Oh, it's got to be Seth Rollins, though. Uh, they're calling him the Monday Night Messiah. How many world championships has he's had? Like, Cody gets a lot of attention and a lot of focus, and he's one of the EVPs for AEW. So, you know, there are similarities there to certain individuals that I will not name. But it's Seth Rollins by a country mile. And let me be clear here. I don't personally have anything against Seth Rollins. I hate Cody Rhodes with a freaking passion. And yet I can still acknowledge that no way, shape, or form is Cody Rhodes more overrated than Seth Rollins, period. I mean, 1911, who do you think should run the WWE after Vince? That is an excellent question, and I don't know the answer. Um, I don't feel confident in Stephanie overseeing everything. Like, it depends. Like, if Stephanie is the chief executive officer and the chairman of the board, but... She doesn't have all of the decision-making power in terms of the product. That could be one thing. And, and let me be clear, that is a significant part of the problem, is Vince is a poor leader because he doesn't understand how to delegate. Like, great leaders get the best out of their people. You don't do that by having everybody live in fear. You don't do that by micromanaging. You don't do that by undercutting the work of others consistently all the time. That's what Vince does. That's why his company is not worth nearly what it should be, because he's a piss-poor leader. That's just reality. Um, who should run it, though? Like, again, I can certainly see Stephanie McMahon in a, you know, like, from a corporate standpoint, like, makes sense to have her involved. Um, makes sense to potentially put that in there. In terms of who should run the creative, which I think is what you're more concerned about in the actual wrestling operation, you know, easy money would say Triple H, but I don't know if that's the case. Like some of you are going to look at NXT as like this great beacon of hope and NXT can't even crack a million viewers on Wednesday night. Can't even be the AEW in the demos. I mean, come on, I'm just saying. Like he might be God, ugh, uh, but he ain't booking a proper wrestling show, popular wrestling show all that well either. Eric Dennis, would you bang Nicole Bass for $100? Really? She's dead and you're only offering me $100. Man, that's cold blooded. Why only $100? No, because she's dead. Next. At Carmine Riches, how much lower do the ratings have to be? There's not much room left. Where the WWE realizes that putting on a children's program and no longer wanting to create mega stars is a flawed strategy. Like I would uh, hope now that they would realize and recognize that their strategy is very flawed, but that ain't happening. So I don't know. They sure sit there and pretend like they care, but at the end of the day, nothing changes, so it makes me think that they really don't. At Jay Harper Games 90, overall take, does a feud with Jericho solidify Orange Cassidy as a main event player? Is the jury still out in your opinion? The jury is more than still out on that. Jericho and Orange Cassidy having a feud helps establish Orange Cassidy as a player. But that's part of the problem with wrestling today is that there's no clear differentiation between main eventers and undercard underneath guys. So as a result, you see Orange Cassidy have one feud with one dude, and all of a sudden we're asking questions about, is he a main event player? Jerry's still out on him, and I don't think that's the type of gimmick that should ever hold a world title. And not everybody needs to be a world champion in order to be a star if you do it right. Like Let him have his shtick and his gimmick and his character, and let him make the most out of that, and let him serve as counterbalance to some of the other more serious heavy hitting wrestling that you have on the show and i am costello asked when will your review impact again oh boy you gotta keep on dreaming for that one that would require me to have to watch what every tuesday night i just don't know if i have the time or the energy or the passion or enough interest to be able to do that right now frankly 
I never say never, but I wouldn't count on it right now. At Platon underscore Kenny, do you think wrestling could be popular again in today's world? Uh, indications are no. If you're asking me popular in terms of getting back to 80s or Monday Night Wars level of popularity, then I would say no. And we have no evidence at all that suggests that could ever be the case. And then we're closing it out with Kieran Chase asking, oh, this is actually a good question for you, Kieran, for a change. Um, where do you think Ray Lewis's white suit is? <laughs> That's not his question, but it's the question I have for him. Uh, which celebrity was more important to their WrestleMania, Mr. T or Mike Tyson? I think it's Mr. T because it was the first WrestleMania. He wasn't just a part of the main event. He was actually wrestling in the main event. In a lot of ways, you could argue that the real rivalry there was not Hogan and Piper. It was Mr. T and Piper. Whereas you could say, you know, it was Austin and it was Tyson, but then it was also Austin and Sean. It was Austin and DX. Like it was Piper and Mr. T. Like, that was the feud that everything spun on. And you look back at that time in 85, you know, they're going out there and getting all of this mainstream press because it's Hogan and in particular it's Mr. T. If this fails, you might not have future WrestleManias. The company might be in a really bad way. Uh, Tyson was important, no question about it, especially because of what he represented and kind of the attitude era culture shift in WWE. And so much about that worked and so much about it made sense. But I still got to think from a historical standpoint, Mr. T was more important to his WrestleMania than Mike Tyson. Other of you may disagree with me. And if that's so, let me know in the comments section. Anyways, thanks to you guys for sending in your questions. I enjoyed this. Let's do it again next week. Until then, see ya. Check out some of the other videos on this channel and subscribe, damn you.